Welcome to Blessed Hope Forever. I want to give you a quick five word sermon. God's perfect, we're a mess. Now I'm going to spend some time talking about some of the things that interest me, some of the things I've been tracking. It has become fairly exhausting to go down the list of coincidences supporting the end of the age uh, to keep track of all the strange anomalies, all of the uh, extraordinary events, eye-opening events that have taken place just uh, in the past seven years. Um, just recently, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing just days before the eclipse. I'll talk a little bit more about that. The world could be experiencing our sixth uh, possible extinction, according to the scientists. A, a mass extinction is a short period of geological time in which a high percentage of species, uh, bacteria, fungi, plants, mammals, birds, reptiles, uh, fish, etc., dies out. Uh, the planet, they say, has experienced five previous mass extinction events, and experts now believe that we're in the midst of a sixth mass extinction. I believe that's relevant. The uh, entertainment industry is following along with all of this. The next newest, latest apocalypse movie is called Leave the World Behind, Wow. And then there's a, a spring movie called Civil War coming out. Now, if we go backwards 6,000 years from June 6th this year, you arrive at June 6, 3977 BC. That's uh, creation day one. So this June 6th is Jerusalem day, and it marks the end of the 6,000 years if the year 3977 BC is correct. The day before the eclipse uh, to the day after the, the election, November 5th, here in the U.S., seven months exact. And then I want to talk a little bit about CERN, CERN, Switzerland. Y'all are familiar with this. I'm no expert on it. The Higgs boson uh, God particle, uh, Stephen Hawking's warned, you know, we could be opening up Pandora's box. He said it could destroy the universe. Uh, 17 mile long, 300 feet underground Swiss, Swiss French uh, uh, thing that's attempting to uh, reduplicate uh, the Big Bang. Seven times the, the speed of light uh, short, uh, or the speed of light, seven miles short of the speed of light. That's interesting. Besides the, the speed in which this uh, beam travels, it's uh, the, the, the collider. You know, seven miles short of the speed of light. I'm, I'm thinking, well, if it was the speed of light, we'd probably be in real trouble. Uh, size in, increases speed. There's, they've seen paranormal manifestations. There's a Hindu god inside its wheel. Uh, Shiva, the god of destruction. Uh, they've just got to determine what holds everything together, even though we as Christians can read Colossians 1.17, that he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. You know, we're looking at matter versus uh, antimatter. Uh, they say one grain of antimatter equals four atomic bombs like we're, that were dropped on Japan. Antimatter is dark matter, and it's related to the spirit world. I believe that they could be opening the gates of hell or maybe they already have, while, while we will likely soon be caught up to the third heaven. You know, it just might be a, a good idea if these astrophysics uh, uh, physicists, the astrophysics community stopped referring to my God as dark matter or, or a particle I'm sure that they would love to prove that God doesn't exist. And of course, all the big news right now is about April 8th. Uh, the eclipse uh, here is expected to last three minutes, 49 seconds. That's a long time. This, this eclipse will remain darker longer. I think that's relevant. 
And April 8, 2024 is the 99th day of the year, and I think maybe that's relevant. 99th day of the year. The uh, 2024 total eclipse is the last one to touch North America until uh, the end of March in 2033, which is the last day of the year on the Hebrew calendar. That's interesting. Uh, nine years from now, you know, could possibly be the first millennium eclipse. So 2024, uh, 99th day of the year, nine years till the next one in 2033. There's some nines there that are interesting. But April 8 in history is interesting. On April 8, 1947, the largest recorded sunspot ever observed at 40 times the diameter of Earth uh, was spotted It was or discovered. It was an estimated 7 billion square miles. Jump ahead 77 years exact to April 8, 2024, and the U.S. is crossed out by the solar eclipse. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Luke 21, 25 reads like a, a news headline. On April 8th of 1966, 58 years ago, Time publishes its uh, Is God Dead issue. That's interesting. Then I want to talk a little bit, touch a little bit on Ramadan. This year, Ramadan began March 10, and it ends April 9, the day after the eclipse. That's always a high-risk period for terrorist attacks. It's one of the, the most sacred times for Muslims. It's the month in which it is believed that the Quran was sent down from heaven. That's interesting. But what really interests, has caught my interest lately is... is Israel, uh, the IDF, the Israeli military, the Israeli government, the, they designed a new rifle scope, a, a site called the Dagger, Hapagion uh, uh, in, in the Hebrew. Uh, it's a fire control system. It follows, locks on, and shoots. It calculates direction and speed of target. The shooter, all he does is prepare the weapon. The bullet is only released when the chances of hitting are high. It is a revolutionary product. Uh, it has a processor that takes into account distance, movement, and even the bullets used. Uh, these creators of the dagger, they, they also believe it'll reduce collateral damage. It was developed to help IDF troops improve their marksmanship and and it gives them the ability to hit moving targets precisely. It actually allows soldiers to hit a target on the first shot, regardless of their skill as a marksman. I find this enormously interesting, especially since I was in the military. But it also reduces the chance of innocent civilians being hit. One of the most advanced Gun sites in the world, the dagger, this has a, an, an electro optic system and a processor that calculates the distance of a target as well as its movement. The movement of the shooter takes that into account, and the ballistics of the ammo and the rifle used, and then it, it just processes all of that information in order to select the optimum moment for the gun to shoot. I just find it amazing, I mean, especially at this particular time. It's an, uh, an advanced, uh, highly advanced image processing system. It knows the right moment to pull the trigger. They were produced by the IDF's Administration for the Development of Weapons and Technological Infrastructure, the Defense Ministry has just ordered its first batch of, of 2,000 of these gun sites. And the timing is just uncanny. They, uh, they actually conducted a test. 
to hit the target with the first bullet while in motion. They had two groups. Uh, they had shooting instructors and they had new recruits. The instructors hit the target and the recruits missed. But then they were given rifles with the dagger gun sight and all of them, including the inexperienced recruits, hit their targets with an accuracy rate of above 70%. The improvement was dramatic. Now, what is the significance of that? Well, I'll just give you my own personal opinion. It, it's really not about, in my opinion, it's not about Israel inventing anything. It's about God protecting His people, preserving His people until the appointed time, as well as His protecting innocence. We serve a compassionate, loving God. Something about 622 A.D., Islam is born, 622 A.D. That's when Muhammad and his followers migrate to the nearby town of uh, Yathrib, uh, later to be known as Medina, where the people there accepted Islam. And it began, this is, the, this is what began the Islamic calendar. That's 622 A.D. Uh, 622 A.M., that's Enoch is born. Now, I want to talk about Enoch's 100 Jubilees here because 6,000 minus 622 plus 365, the years he lived is 513, 5013. If you divide a Jubilee into that, we get 100 jubilees, okay? Pentecost this year is May 14, according to Torah calendar. That's unusual. Uh, uh, Pentecost rapture this year would occur on the date that the church began, according to Torah calendar. That, that wouldn't, have, wouldn't be true last year or the year or, the, or next year. And if those two eclipses were bred, Trump would be the meat a Trump eclipse sandwich, you might say, 2017 to 2024. We're seeing a lot of those uh, of those heptatic time frames, heptatic uh, structure of sevens. Seven is a biblical symbolic representation of completeness and perfection. And then, of course, let's not forget that during the eclipse this year on April 8th, we may uh, actually see the devil comet appear during the eclipse. And what's up with Trans Day on Easter? I mean, seriously? Uh, creation Day 1, June 6, 3977 to June 6, 2024, into the 6,000 years. But where does it land? Well, it lands on Jerusalem Day. Now, if you remember, we've done stuff on the UN partition of Palestine, September. Uh, November 29, 1947 to Hanukkah day one, 2024 is 77 years exact, exact, 77 years, Hanukkah. On November 29, 1947, the UN General Assembly voted to partition Palestine into two states, one Jewish, one Arab, 1947 to 2024 is 77 years. November 28, 2024 is Hanukkah Day 1. And since the count didn't begin till the day following, this marks 77 years exact. So if nothing happens this spring, we've got hope for the fall. And I haven't even touched on September and October. Hanukkah celebrates the rededication of the temple. In Hebrew, Hanukkah means dedication, the, the rededication of the temple in Jerusalem in the second century BC, which was liberated from occupying foreign forces. So a rapture on that date would represent the church, the true temple being liberated from foreign occupiers. And guess what occurs also on that date this year on Hanukkah? This is the day of Thanksgiving. So it'd be a Thanksgiving rapture. 
These are just possibilities, folks, that I'm throwing out here. Furthermore, only in 2024 does our Thanksgiving hit the 77-year mark exactly. It's off the mark in the, the years before and after. But nothing could make the Jews, in my opinion, nothing could make them more jealous than uh, for a Gentile Thanksgiving Hanukkah rapture. And then there's the, uh, the cicadas. Uh, this year, 2024, we'll see two separate batches of uh, periodical uh, cicadas emerge in, in mass, and they'll spread across much of the eastern half of the U.S. Uh, these insects, they crawl out of the ground once every 13 or, or, or 17 years uh, to mate and lay eggs until all the adults die. And the next generation is tucked underground until their own teenage years. It's a, it's a very unusual, but it's an ancient life cycle in, in eastern U.S. forests. It'll be on full display this spring with both a 13-year brood and a 17-year brood emerging, which is a particularly rare occurrence. It just happens to be this year and I, nothing reminds me more of Egypt. Now, I want to end with talking a little bit about Gog and Magog. I wrote an article on this years ago, back in the 80s, when I was in Bible college. Uh, you know, what nations will be involved in the military attack against Israel predicted in Ezekiel 38? Well, in Ezekiel 38, God foretold that in the latter days, there would be a major military attack against the little tiny state of Israel uh, in the homeland once Israel would be restored. God indicated that, that that military attack would be comprised of the armies of nations as they were known back in Ezekiel's day. Five of those nations are named by God in Ezekiel chapter 38, if you want to go and read that. It's uh, early on in the, in the chapter. Uh, you know, Iran, Sudan, Libya, Turkey, or, or some of them. But in, I believe it's in verse 5, the first nation was Persia. Okay, now that's what it was known as in Ezekiel's day, but modern day Persia is the nation of Iran. So some 2,500 years ago, 2,500 odd years ago, through this prophecy, God was saying that in the end times, Iran would be sending military forces against Israel in the Middle East. That's what's happening right now. These things take time, I believe, to build, just like Psalm you know, 83. That radical Muslim government of Iran has publicly declared more than once that its ultimate goal is the annihilation of Israel from the Middle East. We've got protesters here in our own country calling for the end of Israel for genocide in the name of genocide. That's odd. The second nation named in verse 5 is Ethiopia. Now, that again is, is what that nation was known as in Ezekiel's day, but I got to point out that the nation known as Ethiopia back then is not the same nation that we know as Ethiopia today. The nation known as Ethiopia in Ezekiel's day is the nation that we know today as the Sudan. The Sudan. Now, Sudan right now, again, is, is dominated and ruled by a radical Muslim government that hates Israel with a passion and it wants to see it pushed into the sea. See it destroyed. The third nation named in, in verse 5 is Libya. Libya is located due west of Egypt and North Africa. And you know, you know what's been going on in Libya in recent years uh, since the overthrow of, of Gaddafi. Uh, Qaddafi was very anti-West, anti-American, but even more strongly anti-Israel. You know, he would have loved to, to have seen Israel destroyed. The fourth nation named in verse 6, I believe, it was Gomer. Now, in Ezekiel's day, Gomer was a tribal group of people who were located 
in the central part of, of what you and I know today as the nation of Turkey. And I've done a lot of, well, not a lot, but I've done a few videos on Turkey and their role in all of this. The fifth nation named was is the house of uh, Tagarma of the North Quarters. Now in Ezekiel's day, uh, Tagarma was another tribal group of people who were located in the eastern part of what you and I know today as the nation of Turkey. Okay. Now you're probably aware of the fact that since the end of World War II, that Turkey, although it's a, a Muslim nation, has had basically a secular gov government that, it's, that has allied itself with the Western nations of the world. Uh, since Turkey, since the end of World War II, has been a member of NATO. It's been a, an important U.S. security partner, and it's been a valued NATO ally since 1952, but, but that is now radically changing. Not too long ago, a, uh, a radical Muslim party in Turkey won by election uh, control of the government of the capital city of, of the nation of Turkey. And when they won that election, they publicly stated, uh, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but they basically said our next goal is to gain control of the government, the national government of Turkey. And one of the spokesmen for that radical Muslim party said, when we do that, we're going to change our relationship with NATO. We're going to establish an Islamic NATO, okay, and as well as a, an Islamic common market. Turkey is meant to come under complete domination by a radical Muslim element where that it will also turn against the nation of Israel and they'll want to see it wiped off the face of the earth. It is interesting to me to note that every one of these nations named there in Ezekiel chapter 38 today are Islamic, Islamic nations. Therefore, God some 2,500 years ago through this prophecy was indicating that in the end times, Israel will have very serious problems with the Islamic nations of the world. Folks, this is what we've been seeing. There is a, a, a common misconception among conservative Christians, uh, well, Christians of all backgrounds, basically. Russia, folks, is not Rosh, okay? Rosh is a Hebrew word for head. <coughs> the word is frequently used in the Hebrew Bible uh, nearly 600 times. It, it does not in any way imply Russia. Nine times out of 10, the name Gog is mentioned in, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, making it highly symbolic in context. King David was referring to, uh, to Meshach in his time, that's Psalms 120, as a place of war, two centuries before Moscow was first mentioned in A.D. 1147. And... Tubal is frequently mentioned together with Javan, Javan, that's Greece, as a real geographic place far from the Siberian uh, region where, uh, where uh, Tobolsk is located. Gog and Magog are not a literal location, is what I'm saying. It's not an, it's not an allusion to some person or a nation what it is is a figurative phrase. The expression Gog and Magog is an idiomatic phrase with a figurative meaning, meaning all heathen nations, all Gentiles, all pagans, all of those outside 
of God's election and will. The world outside of Israel was Gog and Magog. That's what I want to make clear. For example, Jews in the second century BC in Egypt interpreted Gog and Magog as Ethiopians and, and Nubians who accompanied Antiochus, you know, when he captured Jerusalem. The book of Revelation alludes to this Ezekiel prophecy in chapter 20, when after the, the millennium it ends, Satan calls Gog and Magog, all wicked resurrected nations, to the final battle against the beloved city, heavenly Jerusalem. When the thousand years are complete, Satan will be released from his prison and he'll go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, okay, to assemble them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the seashore. I just want to take a moment to tell all of you how much I appreciate you. How much I love you. We, uh, we're we actually going into what I believe is our final year of Blessed Hope Forever. I, I pray it is. Come Lord Jesus. I don't think that uh, there could be a greater blessing on this generation than to see the, the return of our Lord Jesus Christ where we're caught up in the air to meet Him and to be forever with Him. I hope and I pray that you found encouragement over the years through these videos. I, I pray if it's God's will that we remain faithful and we continue through to the end. We are studying in Philemon on Sunday. I ask you to join us on Facebook. You'll find that link here in the, in the description box. Check out our new website, blessedhopeforever.com. We'll be posting some new articles and some new information as we continue to move forward ever closer to the day of our Lord's return. Once again, I love you all. I truly do. Rest in Him. Keep looking up. We're going home soon. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.